Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and to another video. In this one, I'm going to be talking about a mistake that I feel holds a lot of beginner artists back in progressing their art skills. And whilst I'm talking through this and discussing this topic, you'll see clips of a recent squirrel charcoal drawing that I worked on in the background. And as always, you can find the real time tutorial for this squirrel drawing on my Patreon, as well as over 300 other real time tutorials for just a small amount per month for charcoal, colored pencil, watercolor, and much more. So I'll leave a link in the description to that, but let's get straight into the video. So the mistake that I'm talking about is when it comes to color selection and picking the colors for your drawing or painting. I feel like a lot of beginners put a lot of emphasis and worry a lot about picking the perfect colors for their project. And I think this is even more evident when a beginner is following a tutorial done by another artist and they worry a lot if they don't have the exact colors that that artist has. And I feel that that holds them back a lot because it may prevent them from starting the drawing because they don't feel like they have everything they need and therefore it stops them from progressing and learning new skills. So I think this is really intimidating to beginners when they follow tutorials which have loads of really specific colors, especially for things like portraits or something super realistic that has a lot of different colors and a lot of different tones in them. And so when you see a list of 30 different colors with really specific names, that can really intimidate you, especially if you are on a budget and you don't have loads of different colors. And I think that's a really big problem for beginners because it simply isn't something that you need to worry about having the perfect colors for your project is super overrated especially if you're doing more of an expressive or abstract style something like expressive watercolor paintings it really isn't necessary for you to have the exact colors that the person that you're following has and you can get away with using loads of different varieties and still get a great result for example, if you think about a large set of colored pencils that comes with like 120 different colors, there will definitely be about five yellow colors that all pretty much look the same, but they all have different names like lemon yellow and cadmium yellow and cadmium pale hue yellow. And it can be so overwhelming when an artist says I'm using cadmium yellow and you think oh gosh I haven't got that can I still do this drawing but you definitely can you do not need to worry about if you have the exact color that someone else has or if your colors that you have don't 100% match the reference that you're working on it simply isn't necessary what you have got to worry about is the value of that color so for example, if you're following a tutorial and the artist is using a light green, there's probably five different types of light greens that would be great for that. But what you don't wanna pick is a dark green because the value really matters. And what I mean by value is how light or dark the color is. And that is what's going to make your drawing look accurate and realistic to the reference if you're doing realism or even if you're not, whatever style that you're doing, you wanna have a range of values and you want the values that you're using to match up with the reference that you're using. So it's super important that you focus on the value of the colors that you're picking rather than the exact hue of the color. So if you're picking an orange, you might not have the exact orange that they have. They might be using a more ready toned orange or the reference might be a bit more of a ready toned orange, but you might just have a plain orange. If you're using something like a Crayola set and they just come with one orange, you can use that and it will be fine as long as it's the same value. Also, one thing to remember is that you can mix colors together to get a more accurate color. So if you don't have that reddish toned orange that is in the reference, what you can do is use your orange and then use a bit of red and mix it in and layer those different colors together until you have a color that is a bit more accurate. If you have got a color that's wildly different from the color that you need, then you can always layer different colors together to get the perfect tone. And this is definitely viable if you have a small set of colored pencils. I'm mentioning colored pencils a lot, but these tips are for any medium. I'm just 
mentioning colored pencils for some reason I suppose it's because it's a medium that I use a lot but for watercolors or pastels whatever you can mix the colors together to get a more accurate tone and even if you did have a 12 Crayola set of colored pencils you can layer multiple colors in different combinations to get pretty much any color that you need and of course there are certain references that do need more accurate colors and more specific colors than others. For example, if you're drawing the skin, you will need more accurate tones than if you are just drawing something very colorful and very abstract. You can be a bit more loose with the colors that you're picking. But remember that you have always got the option to mix different colors to get that perfect palette that you need. And to show you what I mean even further, here is a reference of just a portrait that's in colour. And you can see that if I use the slider in a, just an editing software and change the hue slightly, you can see that the realism of the photo is still realistic, just the colours are slightly changing. But it doesn't matter because the values are all still the same and it still looks realistic because all of the detail is still there. So you can see that even though the colors are changing slightly, it still looks realistic. And that's why it really doesn't matter if you have the exact colors and you should just work with what you've got or what is in your budget and just pick the color that's closest to the reference or to the tutorial that you are following. Quite often, I don't really like to say the exact color names. I include them in my materials list, but I just say something like a, a light yellow or a dark brown, just to make it simpler for beginners. And I think that beginners should really stop worrying about the color selection so much. One thing that I do recommend if you are a beginner is just to simply omit color altogether. The one way that you can really practice your values is to use a monochrome medium like graphite or charcoal. And you may be super interested in working with color and I'm not saying that you can't dive into color or practice it, but I definitely think it's important to at least practice some monochrome drawings or paintings just in order for you to learn a bit more about picking the appropriate values and just to show you that you can create great artwork without focusing on picking loads of different colors and it will just give you a bit more confidence you won't have to be overwhelmed with loads of different colors to pick from and getting those perfect colors you can just focus on drawing in the detail and in looking at the contrast and values in the reference so I like using charcoal and it's great because you can turn your reference to black and white and you can just focus on those values and so I definitely recommend giving that a go. And obviously you don't have to worry about color hues because it's just one scale that you're working from. Naturally, as you improve and progress your drawing skills, your color selection skills are also going to improve and you will get better and better at picking the most accurate colors for your drawings. But don't worry about it if you are a beginner and if you don't have a high budget and you don't have loads of colors to choose from, just get stuck in despite the fact that you don't have the exact match of colors that you need, just get stuck in and practice because you can still practice the techniques that you need. And then as you get a bit better and maybe you invest a bit more in your drawing, you can get a larger color selection and improve your color picking skills. But the important part is to dive in. Do not be intimidated by picking colors. It's one of the things that I think hold a lot of beginners back. I definitely see it in my comment section or when I'm doing tutorials and I get feedback, people always ask questions about the colors. Have you got conversion charts? Oh, I haven't got this exact color in the set that I'm using. And it really doesn't matter. So just don't let it overwhelm you and just enjoy the process of creating and have fun with it. And naturally you will improve your abilities to pick the best colors with the best hues for your artwork, but just get practicing and have fun. But I really hope you enjoyed that video. It's a bit different, me talking more about a topic rather than showing the artwork and talking through techniques. But let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this where I talk through mistakes or common sort of myths or misconceptions that artists have, especially beginner artists. And I hope to debunk some of those myths or give you guys some tips on mistakes that you could be making that could be holding you back. So I'd love your feedback in the comment section below. 
Also, like I said, the real time tutorial for this drawing is available over on my Patreon. Also on my website, you can get individual courses for a one-off payment. If you're just focusing on one medium or subject matter, then I've got lots of different courses on there that you can choose from. Again, all of the tutorials are in real time there. Patreon bundles that are bundled together so that if you're just interested in, in one thing, then you can find what you're looking for over on there. So I'll also leave a link to my website in the description below. And if you use the code SAVE15, then you can get 15% off all of my courses. But thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even take that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.